All right, good morning. Today I'm going to talk about Paraguay and its role as a buffer state between two South American powerhouses, Brazil and Argentina. Focus of this presentation is on the tri border region and the countries and how its evolution over time has impacted uh, relations and commerce in the region. In the region. Um, we're going to go back to how the countries became countries, and in the late 1400s and early 1500s, <coughs> Portuguese and Spanish trade routes looked a little, something a little like this on the picture. As you can see, the Portuguese trade routes come up down the, uh, the eastern coast, and the Spanish trade routes come around the western coast and here through the Caribbean um, and South America. This will have an impact later on, and I'm going to talk about this treaty line right here. Eventually, the Spanish and the Portuguese would come to terms on how to divide the territories of the non-Christian world between themselves. Um, as these two countries vied for their claims to territory in the region, Portugal and S Spain came to an agreement with the Treaty of Tordesillas that Spain would get claim to all the land west of this line of demarcation, and then Portugal would get land all the way to the east. Um, however, this line was open to interpretation. Uh, back in 1943 or 1493, this was the line of demarcation according to the Pope. One year later, the two uh, kings for Portugal and Spain got together, and they decided that that wasn't a finance or fiscally good for them, so they moved it over so that Portugal could keep the parts of Brazil to them. Uh, the shift of line of demarcation allowed Portuguese territory of Brazil to remain under Portugal's control, and through clever negotiations, the westward expansion would eventually take place, and this is how it moves over time with uh, Portugal's influence moving this way, and then down here you can see Paraguay. That was important, it was a Jesuit colony that was aimed at take, uh, converting the natives into Christians. So take a look at this map right here. Uh, fast forward around 400 years, and you can see the red light outline area of the borders of old Paraguay prior to the Triple Alliance War of 1863. It's much different now, and pay attention to this because I'll come back to it later um, on how the borders changed. Paraguay went to war with Brazil for fear of having its access to the Atlantic Ocean via the delta of Rio de la Plata, Rio de la Plata down here, cut off. Unfortunately for Paraguay, its ally Uruguay underwent a regime change at the same time, eventually leading to an alliance with both Brazil and Argentina uh, aimed at total destruction of Paraguay. At the end of the war, Paraguay lost not only around half of its territory to Brazil, which will be everything from about right down here is what they're left with, but it also lost around 90% of its military age men to the Seven Year Conflict, and about it was about 50% of the actual territory uh, of Paraguay at the time. And they left the remainder as a uh, buffer zone between the two the two powerhouses. As a means of avoiding monopolization of the riverways, that you can, the main riverways that you can see here, um, the potential choke points were a concern for all of the, the states involved. Um, so Argentina and Brazil as the victors left Paraguay and Uruguay as arbiters or uh, guarantors of the riverways to preclude fear of a single country taking over. This right here is the Chaco War. Uh, you had the war for uh, Triple Alliance down here and the war one up here for, by Paraguay with Bolivia. Paraguay was searching for greater economic stability with oil exploration. They didn't get the oil, instead they just got the Chaco region. Um, both landlocked countries were in desperate need of this economic security blanket as both feared eventually losing access to the ocean and cut off from economic alternatives. Um, involved in this was the Royal Dutch Shell Company and Standard Oil, which aided in speculation of the oil in the, in the region. The new borders of Paraguay seemed to the leadership of Brazil and Argentina to be the most logical way to settle potential territorial disputes between the former colonies of Portugal and Spain after the collapse of the Treaty of Tordesillas to protect the main artery for shipping of goods and high flow rivers, which would later be used for hydroelectric dams and power, which were the red dots that you saw on the screen there. Moving forward again in time, the struggle in Paraguay continues after its wide scale dismantling as a result of war. Ciudad del Este, however, has emerged as the largest commercial hub uh, in the tri-border region with a focus primary, primarily on illicit economies and it has risen as early as 1998 to become the third largest free trade area in the world behind Hong Kong and Miami. Looking at the map of mean per capita income in Paraguay, you can see that the highest density of population is in the southeastern portion down here with the heaviest concentration of mean per capita income residing in the border areas and the heaviest near the tri-border with Brazil and Argentina. Um, I thought it was kind of interesting with all the, the population being in the southern portion. Um, 30 to 40,000 people per day cross the Friendship Bridge that connects Ciudad del Este up here to Brazil, with most of the crossings being couriers, runners, and smugglers, 
black market vendors import goods into Paraguay and smugglers will transport those goods to Brazil and Argentina, defeating cross-border taxation and creating better profit margins and import taxes and avoiding import taxes. There's a picture of the, the bridge up there. The cross-border traffic in this area goes largely unchecked and unregulated with one crime and terrorism report detailing the dispatching of customs control centers to regulate points of entry only after <laughs> notification that journalists were researching the cross-border traffic um, to provide sort of a state of uh, state involvement. As you can see on the two maps above, on the left, Paraguay has a vast highway network that can transport uh, the imported goods down in, to the uh, cross-border area right here. On the right, the key roads for trafficking of the goods um, that are used are on are right there. Uh, they go both into Brazil and Argentina. And another interestingly enough uh, fact about Paraguay is its most profitable illicit get smuggled in the in the areas underground cigarettes produced in Paraguay, with over 30 plants manufacturing cigarettes. Um, tax avoidance becomes the area's primary concern with these goods as they travel by land or by boat across the river into Brazil and then move further on for export. Another result of the redefining of these borders uh, and on Paraguay is the, its fall from power. Became, it became host to terrorist and organized crime organizations in the relatively laxly regulated country. Over the years, the permissive environment of Paraguay has been host to several terrorist organizations, including but not limited to Hezbollah, Taliban, FARC, and Shining Path, to name a few. And as you can see, the tri-border area of Paraguay is more complicated than at first glance would offer as a, as a result of papal decrees, royal treaties, two major wars nearly 100 years apart, all culminating in a sort of peace that is granted to the world with the heavily trafficked friendship bridge and providing them with cheap cigarettes. Um, so. <laughs>